All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to this week's association chat, which is your weekly online discussion for the association community where we warm ourselves by the virtual fire with the topics of the day. Welcoming thought leaders and trailblazers alike to join up in this online home for the community. I'm your host, Kiki Letalien, CEO of Amplified Growth Digital Marketing and CMO of Cannonball Projects, a startup based in New York and longtime host of this weekly chat that's been around since 2009 on Twitter and Blab and now oh, Huzzah. <laughs> it's amazing. So uh, this week's show is a special one. I've invited some of our favorite association bloggers and podcasters to join us for a special Q&A for this week's association chat. And I'm going to ask them all about how they find content and identify good stories and make time to write and secrets that they've uncovered about how to promote their blogs and just a lot of stuff like that. And of course, we want your questions too. We want to throw your questions at them too. So um, because of the number of guests on this week's show and the unpredictability of technology, I ask for your patience and a sense of adventure as we kick off this week's association chat blogger con all right <laughs> so i know we're so excited Woohoo! awesome uh so we have to start off with who better than to start off with <laughs> maddie grant and ernie smith and both of them write a ton and and for many many places but you might know them best from places like for maddie for social fish of course and uh culture chat and ernie you might know him from associations now and like a million other places online he's like a legit writer with street cred to boot so legit, man. yeah he's <laughs> legit so so not not one of us just bloggers on the side but anyway um so to start off, for both of you, you've seen some incredible stories blow up on your blogs and in good and bad ways. And so what was the most memorable post written by you or anyone else uh, for your blog? What was the most memorable post uh, that you've seen blow up on your blog and why? Ernie, you want to go first? I'll go, I'll go. Um, I actually had a post about a month ago that just like, that, that just sort of like, went, you know, went a little crazy on me. It was basically, uh, I basically raised a sort of interesting question, which is that, why is your association using PDFs for everything? And it like, it, and it was one of those things where it just like, I clearly must have hit the right chord because it just like, it seemed like the only thing that people were talking about that day. And it was, you know, it was one of those things where like, you know, I, I kind of knew that like, it was something that I was seeing a lot just because as a writer, I tend to find myself in a lot of association websites and there tend to be like, just, oh, there's this press release that's in PDF form. Why is it not on a web page? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and I was just like, this, this has to be something that like, I should say something about just to be on the safe side, you know, just so, just so like people know that like there are problems with like PDFing all the things. Um, <laughs> PDFing all the things. I feel like that's, that really happens. No more too. PDFing all the things. Yeah. Time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, you know, it was a good conversation piece. It, le it led to a lot of comments on the post and it actually, I think, um, you know, I think it, I think it like, hit the right chords. And that's and that's something that I really strive for with a lot of my blog posts. I try to like, you know, there'll be things that I write like for pure utility. There'll be things I write to like drive questions. And there'll be things that, you know, I I write to, you know, challenge my readers. And I think that that post kind of did a little bit of all three. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And how about you, Maddie? Like I, I so I'm so yeah. I can't wait to hear what, what yours is too. So I actually have two examples, but there's something common to both of them. Um, one of them you may remember was my um, post back in 2010, I think, about whether ASAE had lost its mojo. Um, and that was a post that resonated all over the association community. 
And I think the reason it did is because it was very emotional. It was very mm. personal and very emotional. And I was sort of pulling together a whole bunch of different things that I felt about things that were happening at the time. And it turned out that literally hundreds of other people were feeling the same thing. So there were lots and lots of comments and it, it sparked other conversations in other places that I didn't, I didn't expect, even though I knew that it was provocative when I wrote it. You know, I knew I was coming from an emotional place when I wrote it. And then the other example was actually from a pretty similar time. So a couple of years ago, at least, um, and it was about generations. Mm -hmm. Um, but it it that one sparked without the the emotion. It's it sparked a lot of um, different bloggers' stories. So there were um, it was about Gen X basically, but there were lots of similar posts and people tagging each other in posts um, mm -hmm. about their own experience of these generational issues. Um, and the common thread between both of them is this idea of the personal co connection to the, the story that you're writing about. So the first one is my personal connection, and the second one was anybody could have their own personal connection and have their own kind of story to tell. And somehow, however I wrote it, you know, was able to, to allow people to pick up on that and put in their own comments or create their own stories. So for for some of the stories, especially some of these that you saw blow up and just people ran away with them, did you know when you were writing them, did you have any inkling? Do you have a sign as you're going along and developing stories that this is going to hit and, and people are really going to love it? Or do some just totally surprise you? Like, why do they care so much about the PDF article or something like that? Like how do you have a feeling or a sense of when content is really going to hit? Well, Ernie may have a different opinion because you're more of a professional on this topic. But I will say for me, it's always a surprise. The ones that I work so hard to craft and, you know, like get really deep and they nothing. Nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And then and it's always some random thing that just popped out of the top of my head one day and and that's the one that everybody picks up on so it's very hard for me historically to predict wow yeah i will say i will say that it's not like there's not like a, a lot of science to it i think that there's um you know i think that there are things i know like tend to do okay uh with you know like in the association community but like um just kind of like pull an example from from outside of uh, outside of what I write in associations. Like, you know, last last week I wrote a post, uh, you know, separately on uh, you know like uh, on, on my own site. I I basically found I basically did an interview with this guy who essentially invented the mouse pad. It was it was kind of a it was kind of a weird weird thing, and I find weird things all the time like that. I put so much work into that. And I thought it was going to be really, really huge. And I don't think it like, and, and I think that like, while it like had a bit of an impact, it didn't go as far as I thought it would. Mm -hmm. I thought it would be like a little bit bigger than it was. And I think that just to, just to kind of give some perspective, like, you know, you really need to be like, you know, if you want something to hit, like you have to be, you know, you have to be knowledgeable and on top of things. Mm -hmm. You really have to know, like, okay, this is this is what the community reacts to. You know, here's here's the data that's available to me. How can how can we like make it go further? Um, and I think that what's really um, what's really cool is that um, I guess I guess a good way to I guess a good way to put it is like, you know, things may happen by accident, but but sometimes, uh, but but some but sometimes the best accidents happen when you know when when you know when you know how to like make you know when you know like how how it might happen you know like mm -hmm. when you know like what to expect you know like if if it were to happen I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> have you have you ever fallen in love with a story? This this makes me think of this question actually, and then I've got to invite a couple more people on. So. Um, but have you ever have you ever fallen in love with a story or an idea of a story and you're just like 
this is awesome. I mean, I mean, this, this is going to take off and people should love it. I love it. And, and you have such great dreams for it and it just never flies. Something similar to what you were talking about, Ernie, but like, you know, I, I, I guess that that whole kill your darlings idea, but I feel like sometimes there are just things that you're like, I love this concept. Like everyone should fall in love with this. And then no one does. Does that ever happen? I mean, I think it happens. I, I think it happens frequently. I mean, there are, there are things that like, you know, sometimes, sometimes it just seems like it's, you know, it should be in the cards, but it just isn't. And, you know, like you can, you can like, you know, it's, it's sort of like when you're in the middle of a decision making process a little bit, like if you're trying to, you know, basically say like, you know, like, I don't know, you know, should I go with, should I go with this? Should I go with that? Like, you know, a little bit of the gut decision, you know, like not every gut decision pans out. And I think that it, you know, and I think it's very much the same thing when it comes to, to writing content online. You know, I, I will say, I will say this much, you know, like in a lot of ways, the best, the best way to ensure that something succeeds as you're working on it. Um, I, I think, you know, is, is, uh, sorry, I got like a little, lost there but like <laughs> the work that goes you know you have to put a lot of work into it like after the yeah. you know you have to put a lot of work into it after the post you can't just like post it and be like if they see it people will come you know like you have to you know there's a lot of work that goes into into like making it look like a, an accidental success <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely okay guys this is awesome i love you both and i hope you stay on over in the chat area we but will I'm we will I'm going to kick you off. <laughs> so I'm going to no ask. I, I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. Um, but stick around, stay in the chat area. And then I am going to bring on our next couple of guests. So let's see here. Oh, big picture of me. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, I'm moving on to Elizabeth Weaver Engel. Elizabeth, here you are. Hopefully you can jump on now. And then um, and then along with Elizabeth, we have Salisa Steele. And Salisa, does anyone see Salisa in here? Um, hopefully she'll be able to jump on in a second. Here we go. All right. And Salisa, Salisa you should be able to jump on in a second. Oh, no. Oh, here we go. Yay. All right. Great. <laughs> All right. So everyone, um, so our next guest, Elizabeth Weaver Engel, you might know her best from Spark Consulting blog, but she has been blogging for years and has multiple blogs going on. So she, she writes right all the time. So Lisa Steele is with Leading Learning Podcast. And so this is where we're branching over into talking to some of our favorite association podcasters who um, one of your most recent ones that I had a chance to listen to, you interviewed Dory Clark, which was just phenomenal. So um, I had a few questions for you and then everyone over on the side, I wanted to remind you guys that you can ask your questions, ask them in the chat or ask them in Q&A, totally fine either way. But uh, my first question actually had to do with uh, the habits that you have to make sure that you can be productive and churn out quality content on a regular basis. Um, you know, especially I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll ask you, Elizabeth, first, because I mean, I know over the years that I've seen you turn out a lot of content in a very short amount of time. So I'm curious to hear what, what some of your tips and tricks are for that. And then Salisa, I would, I would love to hear from you too. Yeah, that's, um, that's a really good question. So I would say there are a couple of things that contribute to that. One is if you want to write well, you need to read widely. Um, and so, and, and not just um, stuff that's relevant to your work or not just, you know, other bloggers or not just short pieces, right? You know, it's, it's important to be reading you know, Harvard Business Review, but it's also important to read really good novels. You know, mm -hmm. it's important to read interesting blog posts, but it's also important to read like long form journalism. 
Um, and so, you know, the, the number one thing that you can do to improve your own writing is to do more reading. Um, and the other benefit of that, and I think this is the thing that's critical to turning out a lot of uh, content, is when you read widely, you're going to end up having a lot of interesting ideas sparked in your own head. Um, and I do keep sort of a running list of stuff that I'm interested in writing about, whether it's short form for my blog or longer form for the white papers that I put out. Um, and so when you have time to write, whether it's, you know, an hour to write a blog post or you're thinking, okay, I've got a brief break in my consulting work, it's time to do another white paper. Um, that's when you can turn to that list and say, okay, you know, these are the things that I've been thinking about or that I'm interested in thinking about. Now it's time to take on one of these. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think, Salisa, about that? Are you, are you a big reader? Do you, do you take in a lot of information all the time? Absolutely. I, I absolutely second what Elizabeth had to say there about reading, reading widely, not reading just in one genre. Um, and that I think that there are then very interesting connections that can come from that, that broad reading. Um, to your question about sort of the, the making time, I feel like I need to start with a true confession. Like we have a weekly podcast, but we did miss about three weeks this summer. And so, you know, I think that it really is difficult to, to stay on top of things and, and keep and keep it happening. But um, I also decided that, you know, we need to be forgiving of ourselves as well. And so just because you miss a few, um, you know, a few of your own internal deadlines, that doesn't mean that, you know, you need to throw in the towel or that you've let people down. So, you know, we, we strive for a weekly podcast, but um, we're a little less than a year into it. And like I said, we just, we hit a little period where between client work and the travel and other things, it just got a little bit hard. And I saw in the chat, someone asking about that balance between writing versus client deadlines and all of that. And it is, I mean, I think it's difficult to balance, but for me, it comes back to, and I think this is a little bit of what Ernie and Maddie were talking about too, that, you know, there are things that you podcast about or write about, blog about that interest you. And if it's that shared interest, like if you first bring your own passion and interest to it, then there's the hope, the chance that others will, will bring their passion and find something that resonates with them as well. And so, if you're interested in what you're doing, you're going to keep coming back to it. And that's going to be part of how you find the time because it's important enough that you're going to make the time for it. Yeah. I, you know, and I found that to be true with the chat as well, because it's definitely, it's changed formats. And while it's changed formats, it's challenged me to on a regular basis, be looking at, and I wish I could do, think about it more than I do, but it's challenged me on a regular basis to be thinking outside of, um, you know, what What can the topic be for this week that's the typical topic that we talk about all the time to who can I talk to that's really fascinating and maybe not necessarily an association executive, but maybe somebody from outside of the industry. And I'm really starting to plan on some stuff coming down the line that is focused in that, in that direction where whether it's about creativity or something else, you know, that, that it fosters discussion that can help us to all grow, whether in this industry or, or outside of it. Yeah, and that picks up on, I think, what Elizabeth was saying about that cast your net broadly. Don't just, you know, read short form journalism or whatever, like you're saying, you know, even if the, the core audience you're serving is the association audience, that doesn't mean that there, there are other resources to bring and other people to interview and involve that, that makes that that much more interesting. Do you have any favorite tools or software or apps or programs that you like to use um, in any aspect of putting out your, your blogs or your podcasts? Because, um, you know, there, there are a million and one different ways to use things, whether in scheduling or saving ideas or creating graphics or whatever. Is there anything that is... One of, you know, what are your favorites? I guess share share those. I'm a big Evernote user. Uh, you know, honestly, I, with the, the blogging platforms, you know, for the Spark blog, it's on WordPress um, because my site's on WordPress. Um, for my personal blogs, they're still on like old school Blogger. I mean, you know, not even <laughs> not even fanciness. Um, but you know, Evernote is the place that truly is my brain dump. Like anything, mm -hmm. any thought that is going through my head or any idea that I have. Um, that I want to keep track of, it goes in there. Um, because for me, the thing that, that makes it so great is I have it on all of my devices 
and it's mm-hmm. synced across all of my devices. So no matter where I am, when the idea occurs, I can get it down really quick and I know that I'll be able to get to it later. Um, because a lot of this is about, you know, I've, I've developed an, an interest or I think this is a good topic or I really want to follow up on this thing or, you know, hey, there's even there's like there's this great article. So let me, you know, use the Evernote web clip feature to toss the article into Evernote so I can read it later. Um, you know, it's just, it's a great place to throw everything and then I can, I can figure out what I want to do with it later. Well, I have to second Evernote. I mean, I use that in terms of capturing the ideas and making notes about, you know, what I want to ask somebody if I'm doing an interview for the podcast or points I want to make during it. And then, you know, like you said, Kiki, there are a million and one, you know, tools. So, you know, we, we have a, a WordPress site where we sort of house um, show notes for each of the podcasts and have that there. We use Libsyn for putting out um, the actual podcasts and we use you know, GarageBand on a Mac for the, the, <laughs> the processing of all. So, you know, I mean, the amazing thing to me is that with, you know, both podcasting and blogging is that all these tools are out there and they're not that hard to use if, you know, with a little bit of time and, uh, you know, trial and error and experience with them, they, they can make it pretty easy to put really good content out there. So, okay, so I have one more question and then I'm going to invite others on. This is so fast. I feel like I could talk to both of you for an entire hour and um, or beyond. Um, So as far as blogging and podcasting, what's been the most surprising discovery that either one of you have made or both of you have made um, this past year about, about blogging or about podcasting, about putting this content out there? That's a really good question. Um, oh. Well, I can I can jump in and give Elizabeth yeah, go for, a, a go for it. I need to think for a minute. Can, yeah, I mean, I think for me, it's just how it has come to be not so much uh, an additional item on my to do list, but how it's actually sort of helped me to consolidate some to do. So, you know, if I'm mm-hmm. going to be interviewing somebody, I'm going to be reading a book, and it's already a book that I wanted to be reading anyway. So, for me, it's been this this way of doing things that I already wanted to do, like reading or like taking time to think and see some intersections. And it's actually given me sort of, um, you know, some deadlines and some um, uh, accountability around doing those things that I want to do anyway. So I think for me, that's been a really um, great discovery because it, it's it been, you know, good for me to, to be able to see that these are not disjointed, that they all fit together. Mm. I think one of the things that's been the most surprising for me, I've, I've been blogging about associations since 2008. Um, and in the last year or so, I've actually been doing less blogging. Um, and the reason for that is the white papers. And so, you know, Ernie's going to kill me because they're, they're all, they all come out in PDF um, because they are, <laughs> you know, long, com- there's complex formatting and all that kind of thing. Yeah, I know PDF is terrible, but, um, you know, if you got stuff with a bunch of inline graphics and charts and it, there's just no reasonable way to put out a 40 page document with all that stuff, um, you know, and, and a lot of uh, a lot of reference notes, a lot of research notes um, in HTML that I've that I've come up with. Um, but I've what I found is that um, I've wanted to dig into topics in more detail, uh, bigger topics spend more time researching them, spend more time learning about them deeply, um, and then write about them in ways that I can't do in 250 or 500 words. Um, and so you know, my own focus has kind of shifted to that more long form writing. Um, and as a result, I'm, I am doing less blogging. Um, and so one of the things that I've, that I've been doing with the blog is you know, to keep it from going silent completely silent while I'm working on these things, because they, they do tend to be pretty absorbing, is um, I am repurposing old posts. So I've been going back and finding posts that I really liked, that I thought said interesting things, that got a lot of comments, that got a lot of shares, et cetera, um, and sort of bringing them back up to the front of the blog you know, with some revisions and some updating, um, which has been a nice way to be able to keep that going while my attention is focused more on these sort of longer term research projects. I love this. You guys, and I mean, I don't know, for for all the participants, don't you love all of the, the collection of resources that are coming up over here on the side? Because I can't wait till I can go back and watch this again and then take down notes on all of the different 
apps and, and different tools that you're using over there. So this is really, really awesome. I love this. Okay, Salisa, Elizabeth. <laughs> I've got to kick Bye. you guys off. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Okay. Oh, that's the hardest part. You know, the goodbyes are so terrible and these are no exception, but it's not really goodbye because they're coming over to the side and I'm bringing on the exciting, the effervescent Cynthia Demore, except it says her device isn't supporting broadcasting. I'm not sure what's going on with that. And um, Beth, Beth Bradovsky. So let's see here. And please, please, please let Cynthia's device bring her on. Hey, mm. did you get me? Okay. Hey, Beth. Hey. Cynthia, it's not letting me invite you on. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why. Um, I'm getting like a little thing that's not letting me go ahead and send the invitation. So, hmm. not sure what to do. All right. Well, uh, in the meantime, hi, hi. So thank you for joining me and jumping on. Thanks for um, including me with all these great people. I know this is so fantastic. And you know, it's, it's great. There were others who wanted to be here and they couldn't make it happen, mm -hmm. but I mean, what a crew, what a fantastic group of people. And especially, you know, having you here, I think, I'm not sure if everyone has visited, but I bet you have. I bet you've heard of this wonderful podcast called Driving Participation. <laughs> A lot and, of the people that are here have been on it, actually. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I absolutely, it's phenomenal. And you're phenomenal. And you're yeah. great at asking um, just really poignant questions. And uh, I just enjoy learning from it all the time. And I guess for my first question for you is really, um, why did you start the podcast mm -hmm. in the first place? And is that still the same reason that it exists today, that you're doing Ooh. it today? You know what? I've never had anybody ask me that in that exact way. So I started, I'm a huge podcast listener. I started listening to Gosh, I think, wait, wait, don't tell me, an NPR show a bazillion years ago. And my brother, actually, um, all of you that are in D.C., my brother lives in Frederick, Maryland, and he works for Fairfax County School District. So he has the joyous two-hour commute around D.C. So he was listening to all this stuff and constantly saying, you got to hear this and you got to hear that. So I started listening to podcasts and got really, really into them myself. Meanwhile, I run a marketing company and cannot seem to manage to do consistent communications myself. You know, we have the like most random email that goes out and I kept saying, well, we should do, you know, like we should do a blog post on like that. Whereas, you know, while Elizabeth sits there and gets all these ideas and then actually does something about it, I, you know, I'm driving along thinking I should really write something. And then I, I could never find time to do it. So... Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm one of those people that's really good at like extreme control, like doing exactly the same thing or extreme what the hell. And like moderation <laughs> is my problem. So I felt like if I did something that's to me in my mind seemed as public as, as a podcast, that that might make me say, I'm doing it every week. Damn it. I don't care if I'm in Paris this week. I'm going to, I'm going to do a podcast. And so that's really helped. So one reason I did it was so that I would force myself to do my own content marketing, which is, you know, we do this for people, so we had to do it ourselves. And I also needed to do something that would be consistent and create my own content. And I also thought, you know what? There's a whole lot of people that I would love to meet that haven't always been easy to get to. And having a piece of media is like the golden ticket to have anybody talk to you that you want to talk to. And I've now built, we're, we, we've done it weekly for a little bit over a year. So I have, we're on like episode 114. Wow. And wow. it's insane. Congratulations. Yes. Um, yeah. So it's been amazing. So now I have this pool of all these amazing people. Some of them are here today that are now part of what I call my, you know, influencer community, people that I can go to and say, I need a referral for this, or I need content for that, or I need an expert yeah. on this other thing. And it's just been incredible. Well, and you know, the thing is, is in putting that good content out there, I, I'll say this, that when I started asking, okay, so who should be on this show? Just asking around your name, just boom, boom, boom. And I was oh. like, well, she was on the show like two <laughs> weeks ago, but yeah. You're right. Yeah, I'm yeah. back again. <laughs> <laughs> but 
but no, you know, it was like um, the fact that that's that you're somebody that is top of mind that people are saying you have to have Beth on. And I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, of course. So, um, so that's, that's been a really phenomenal thing. And, and I think that now that you've gotten started, now that you've been spending over a year putting this podcast out, do you mm -hmm. have plans for how it's going to grow? I mean, could, or at least plans that you could share with us on yeah. the things that you'd like it to, to do next. You know, and you're, you, that's a really great question because we've actually been talking about that a lot in the office of, you know, which way can it go? Like, should the podcast become a piece of media on its own? Should we be trying to get sponsors for it and grow it and get more exposure for it? Or should we really treat it as a piece of content marketing of our own? And should we, you know, kind of draw it back in and say, maybe we should drop it down to every other week because you know, it's really mm -hmm. hard to do, like do what you've done for all these years, weekly, you know, guests and content. And in my case, we do a transcript every week, which is one of the hardest things because they either need to. Who do you get that? How do you do that? Oh, who, how do, who I do, do you, who do you go to you? for that? Because it's expensive to it, do it that. It can be. I actually yes. found somebody on it on, on Fiverr. Do you know Fiverr? Yeah, I love um, Fiverr. Yeah. yeah. So we found, we, yeah. and I, what I did is I, I, I did a whole lot of shows. We recorded 13 shows before we even went live. And so I tested out three different people and I found one that I really liked. And so she's been doing our transcripts, you know, for, you know, years now. And it's, it's uh, like $5 for 10 minutes and the shows are about 45 minutes. So each show is about $25. Oh my gosh. And then, and that then, is such a good deal. I know. Yeah. It's really, that is really such great. such a good deal. However, she's so good and I keep recommending her to people like an idiot um, that she's getting really busy. So now she's got like almost a two week time that it takes to get a transcript back. So mm -hmm. if I have somebody cancel or a miscommunication or Skype has like a bad hair day, then it's like, it, it's really hard. And in fact, we're in that period right now. I feel like I'm in like this moment where I had one person get the flu, one person, we had a communication issue, yeah. one person. Oh, yeah. just, and you know, it's all of a sudden you look out and you're thinking, Oh my gosh, I don't have enough content. So then I have to actually, you know, write. So I hate that. I hate yeah. that. And I run into that. And it's, it's like when it's not your full-time job, when this it's is not. something that, you know, it's something that you do because you just, I don't know. I, now I feel like I, I have to do it. Like I need to do this. And, and I'm scared is. if I drop to, I'm scared if I drop the frequency, that I'm yeah. going to like go into my normal, like, well, I can eat cookies then, um, you know, <laughs> it's like just this one time it's a party, you know, you know how you can be like when you, when you feel like I haven't missed an episode, it's like, yeah. I feel like I have my 12 step pin about it. Like, I don't yeah. want to like, I don't want to mess that up. Um, uh, but, yeah. but on the other hand, as a company, because I'm a business, I'm also looking at it and thinking, if this isn't like literally making us money, is it the best use of our time? How, where does it fall? I'd be curious about what other people say. Well, and you know, it, it, I'm curious too. What do you guys think out there? Because, um, you know, I I have the same kinds of questions. And actually, huzzah, this this platform, there's a, there's a side to it that I am considering testing. Mm -hmm. I can't decide whether I should do this or not. But, you know, I don't, I don't take any sponsorships or anything like that connected mm -hmm. to association chat and I get a chance to say like a little thing about myself at the beginning but other than that you know I'd like to keep it commercial free and I was thinking that because this is connected to Patreon you know maybe there's a way to somehow like if people feel, feel generous or want to give to the cause to help provide for things like transcripts and stuff like that because right, people have no idea it's expensive it's, it's expensive you know and I, I have been asked for years um, where it's like well do you have a transcript from the and I'm like no no I don't I don't I don't have an extra hundred bucks to float every week so I can get it back faster you know it's really and so, hard. It is, the one um, good thing I can say, the, 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 the great thing about the transcripts, where my business is moving is we do client services, but we also, I have a website that's called Nonprofit Toolkit, where we're building out tools and trainings and, and different things. And what I've found through having the transcripts, I have bits and pieces of things that are already written that I have been able to lift and incorporate into other things that we're doing into you know, white papers or into course programs, into scripts for other things that I'm talking about. And that's, that's been really, it's been great to have these things as a resource that I can 
I can grab and go back to. It also really helps to make a show notes page. It helps to write all of the social media posts that go out there. But, you know, it's an expense, as is, like, I have somebody that um, that does the audio editing for it. Mm -hmm. So I have a staff. Like, I have, you know, all of my staff uses bits and pieces of their time to create it, to do the show notes page. So all of it, if you look at where it all adds up. Yeah, it sure does. Mm -hmm. I know it does. And it's well, but it's a hard decision. Well, like, do you take sponsorship? Do you what? Do you keep going? What do you do? I know. I know. Yeah. Well, okay. So this was fantastic. <laughs> Stick around. Um, I'm inviting Ariana and Maggie to join mm -hmm. on. Thank you, Beth. Thank you Bye. so much. Bye. All I right. It's early hit. Clicked it. I'm sorry. All right, all right. No, that's okay. This is great. Uh, let's see. And let's make sure that Maggie gets on. Maggie. Like, yes. Oh, Lord. I hate video. <laughs> I'm just going to start with that. And there's a window behind me. Maybe I can. Yes. You look. There no, you this go. is great. Yes. Yes. This is much better without the window craziness in the background. Maybe. All right. So everyone, in case uh, everyone watching this right now, um, I've invited Ariana. And how do I pronounce your last name? Rehak? Rehak? Ray Hack. Ray Hack. Okay. Yeah. Not, not an everyday at all. Yeah. That's all right. Italian. I don't know what to say about that. So, <laughs> so uh, Ariana Ray Hack and Maggie McGarry. Ariana is with Association Success, and if you haven't checked out Association Success yet, you should. You shall, and you shall after this, because Absolutely. there are a lot of there are a lot of fantastic uh, bloggers that are over there that are posting great material over there lots of features and different types of benefits uh, connected with, with association success. So um, I invited Ariana to be on here though, because she is, you know, managing that and talking with all of the, the content uh, uh, providers and producing content herself. And so I thought she'd be fantastic to have on. And then Maggie McGarry, Maggie McGarry is Ms. Information, and you've seen her blog for, for years, and you have probably connected with Maggie listening to her give presentations at multiple events, all kinds of, uh, you know, organization events and whatnot, why we just spoke at one recently. I know, you? right? That was an awesome one. So um, if you haven't checked out Ms. Information, you should go over there and check that out too. But um, for the for the two of you, for both of you, I, you're definitely in different stages of the blogger game and you're doing very different things. Um, so what I wanted to do is, is give you a chance, Ariana, to talk a little bit about mm -hmm. um, what it is that you're trying to do. And then Maggie, I want to talk with you after that about misinformation, you know, kind of what it's been through and where it's headed, because you've done some amazing things with the blog over the years, too, and had to make some pretty significant decisions on platforms and all kinds of stuff. Oh, so, geez, yeah. yeah. So, um, Ariana, I'd like to start with you. Could you tell us a little bit about what's going on with association success and why it is that, that, um, you're pulling all these awesome bloggers into, into association success and yeah, more. absolutely. Tell us more. You know, our world is really changing right now so rapidly thanks to technologies. And of course, this is exponential change. So if we consider the differential between the present day and 20 years into the past, it's actually going to be nothing compared to present day and 20 years into the future, which is obviously a really scary thought, but also potentially a really exciting one and an, and an opportunity. So I think that really being forward thinking is a relevant lens to consider really every industry right now, but it's especially relevant within uh, the association realm, because we're not just considering our internal organizations and how they're going to be affected, but really the people that we're servicing. And, you know, associations still have a massive potential to make an impact in people's lives as, as they have been uh, for many years. But really, we're here asking, how can we do this better? And this isn't just about anticipating the future obstacles that are coming, but it's really about tackling the current ones and, and what that means. So what we do is uh, we combine two elements. So we have a media site as well as a community. And that's really because we want to provoke a discussion rather than just, you know, spitting out uh, rhetorical ideas. So it's not, it's not about talking at you and telling you the type of things to be considering. It's about opening up a dialogue. And, and this is really what the community is about. 
So we have a lot of great content on our media site by thought leaders, some of which are in this chat, which I'm really excited about, and also some of them in the chat I'm hoping to be an association <laughs> success suit, Maggie being one of them. Um, and so really these ideas by thought leaders are intended to be seeds of discussion within the community. Fantastic. All right. And um, so as far as if people want to get more get involved with it, like they feel this, this, urge to begin writing for association success is that are you are you looking for content providers are you looking to connect with people like always that? yeah and i think this is a really important thing i want to emphasize is that um when i say thought leader i i don't just mean you need to have a, a social presence or social media presence a big following it's really about having new ideas and you know even if you're not a writer and that doesn't come naturally to me I want to talk anyway. I want to hear your ideas. We will. My my job is really a facilitator. I'm here to to figure out how to present those ideas. So I'm gonna post my email address into the chat, and really even just introducing yourself and saying hi. I'm I'm new to the association space, and I'm just finding it to be really warm, and people want to share ideas. And really, that's that's the point of association success is to to bring an outlet for this. Okay. So so, email now. That, excellent. Thank you so much. And I just want to say, um, all of this, all of the supportive commentary over on this side, you guys are amazing. And yes, Maggie does look absolutely. Oh lord. Um, so usually I'd be fidgeting like a thousand times more than this. So I'm trying my super hardest to sit still. So. <laughs> I had to throw my pen away. I realized I, know, I was like, like playing with it. I'm like, okay, I can't do it here. You have to have the plan. Like you come on association chat, you've even got to have the association chat mug. Like I'm, re I'm ready to go. Um, I do up my sweet spot mug. Yes, Delacour social media sweet spot. Right? That was the show back in the day. See? Yeah. Right yeah. within the arm's reach. Okay. Oh, that was that was a lot of fun. Thank you for that. That, that just really fun. gave me a lot of joy. Okay. So, um, so yeah. So Maggie, tell us what's going on with Ms. Information. I, I want to take us back a little bit and you can maybe explain what prompted you to start it and then tell us, tell us where you're at with Ms. Information now, because a lot of exciting things has I mean, there has been controversy that's been oh, from yeah, posts know, right? on, on this blog. Like, so, so what's going on with Ms. Yeah. And um, I don't really know. I'm trying to hang in there. Uh, I love it. I love blogging. And I kind of, you know, even though um, if I look at stats and you know, focus on that kind of stuff, it's easy to get discouraged. And I'm kind of, you know, wonder what the point is. Uh, I, I. I don't, at this point, I kind of feel like I just want to keep doing it just to keep doing it. Um, yeah. I did, I'm trying to remember, I wrote a post about um, this really good article. And of course, now I can't remember the guy's name. I'll look, I'll search for it and put it in the chat. But just about how the internet has really changed and blogging has changed. And it used to be just this really revolutionary channel that could connect people. And he, I think he was, he was an Iranian blogger who had gone to prison and um, went to prison, I think for, you know, his blog and the views he was expressing there and the, the kind of controversy that he was inciting with it. And when he got out of prison, the internet had totally changed and just that power that blogs and individual blogger voices used to have is just kind of lost in today's internet. So I think part of that, that's kind of my motivation to keep going just because, you know, I think it's really important to realize you can have a voice, even if nobody's listening at the moment, there's always, you know, first of all, just, that every voice is important and whether or not anybody reads it, that's not the important part. Um, but also, you know, sometimes I'll write posts and one person will write back to me individually or comment and it, it then it, it kind of makes it all worth it. So even though, it, you know, you kind of go in stages and I get sick of it and then I get unsick of it, um, I try to kind of keep with it and evolve. I'm now starting to open up to some guests Posts. I had been kind of adamantly against that because to me it was my personal blog like a diary uh, and I just didn't feel comfortable with that. Um, lately, you know, as I've been working for a small staff organization and having to learn a ton of stuff, um, 
I've been, you know, it occurred to me that if I'm going to ask or read up on this stuff, I may as well go to the experts and have them write something not only so I can learn it, but then I can also share that in case others are interested in learning the same stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, technology wise, I was just looking, I actually talked to uh, Ariane and I had an awesome chat on Friday and we were talking about how long I'd been blogging and, um, I had to go back to Blogger because I started on <laughs> Blogger. So I, the first time I posted was in 2008. Um, and so in my, you know, consecutive migrations first to, I think I first went from Blogger to, I forget what, and then to Squarespace. And now I'm on WordPress again. Um, but so with each one, something has kind of gotten lost in the, in the migration. I think I only have archives back to 2013 on the current site. Um, but originally I started writing just because I was working um, in a job that I didn't have a lot of work. So I was like, I'm gonna just start learning about social media and I'll just start writing about that mm -hmm. um, as I learn to kind of practice my writing skills, maybe um, get hooked up with some freelance writing gigs and also just kind of share what I'm learning as I learn it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I, and I love, you know, I think that um, one of the, the most delightful things about going to misinformation is that when you, when you write posts, your voice is definitely authentic and yeah. <laughs> you, you um, there's that, that element of humor that I think that a lot of times in the association space, we're really looking for, we need to laugh. Right. Um, and yeah. So, well, and that's the thing is I think yeah. just really encouraging people, you know, t to me, it's, not being afraid to say stuff, you know, I mean, for me, there is, especially because I am an employee, I don't have my own company. So there's always kind of, and I've had a lot of jobs in the past couple of years. So there's <laughs> always that thing of like, what if a potential employer is going to look at it and maybe I shouldn't cuss or say certain things, or I should, um, you know, not, I definitely have a tendency of being way stronger in writing than in person. In person, I hate confrontation and I am not a confrontational person at all. In writing, I come across as way more confrontational and I've run into my share of confrontations over the years um, through my writing. But, you know, I just figure whatever. And, and this it's sort of like if I like it and I want to hit publish, the chances are that it's going to, you know, like be a life changer in a negative way or pretty slim. So. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So I hate to do this, you guys, but I've got to kick you off and I've got to scramble to make sure that we can get on um, our next two bloggers. Bye. 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 Jamie, Bye. I'm laughing. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Thank you. You can stick around other than, other than, yeah. uh, than jumping on the, the, video. So, okay. So we have Eric and we have Jamie who I'm inviting to jump on and hopefully that will work. Yeah. Edge of your posts definitely help wake people up. Sin. I, I'm so sad that we can get Cynthia on, but here we have, and Eric, I haven't spoken to you in ages, but it is so sad. Eric Lanky and we have Jamie Nodder and both of them um, have from the very beginning of, I, I, I think as soon as I started reading blogs in the association space, you know, I became aware of the conversations that were being held um, in, you know, I think online forums or something. I'm trying to remember. I think it was like there was conversations going on online before even the blog stuff. And then um, it was text back channels back then. Yeah. Gosh. Oh, that, you're making cobwebs. But <laughs> here we are. We have Eric Lanky and we have uh, Jamie Nodder. And Jamie Nodder, you know, um, with the Work XO blog and Culture Chat, and you're you're posting a lot over at Associ Association Success now, and Eric, um, who I think I follow Eric, so that if he ever goes the haiku direction, I can be inspired. So, <laughs> um, thank you both for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, I think that that my question for both of you is is the same thing, and I, I would love to hear what you have to say about it, is really where have you seen or how have you seen what you've posted 
on your blogs in the past um, impact our industry? How have you seen it actually, you know, make change or make ripples at least in um, the work that we do? I take it by Eric's silence. I'm going first. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. Um, I think it's hard to track real change to the conversations we've been having online. Like it's not a sort of cause and effect kind of thing. Um, I do know that we've, I would say both Eric and I have contributed to creating a community of people who have conversations online about association leadership that is distinctly different than the status quo. Like, mm -hmm. like we've established that pretty well, not just the two of us, obviously, but all of us have done this. Um, we've, we've, we've created conversations that I don't think were happening. And I think we were on the leading edge of some of those conversations. And so I feel like now, I mean, the ripples you mentioned, like I, I am still amazed at the number of people that I meet. They're like, oh, yeah, I've been reading your blog for like five years. I'm like, really? Like, and I've never met them. I never talked to them. I don't have conversations with them. But it's sort of a reminder that, you know, you sit there and you type your blogs and you publish it and you read it and you tweet about it and you get your, you know, 10 retweets or whatever and think, oh, sweet. And actually a lot more people are reading it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you just, you forget that. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think, I think we are part of a conversation that is sort of cemented now, um, which I think is good, but I, I wouldn't know how to connect that directly to, to what's changing. Oh, Eric? Well, this is my sound check. Can people hear me or not? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Okay. But okay. I think Beth is saying she thinks that you win for having the coolest background so far. So I agree. I yeah, is it the, the ceiling fans in the background or the yeah. artwork? Which one? So. <laughs> Both. It's a combination. Uh, just another day in the office, I guess. But, uh, you know, I think where where I've seen it, I mean, my blog uh, tends to be about uh, some real issues that I'm facing uh, as an exec, uh, among other things. Um, and it's interesting that it can sometimes spark dialogue here in the office hmm. uh, that otherwise wouldn't come about. I mean, it's you know, the boss can say things in a staff meeting and can send out emails to people, but I'm speaking in a different voice on the blog. and when my own staff reads that, they sometimes get a different understanding of, of what the real issue is that we're trying to come over. So I've seen that happen before where uh, because of something I posted on my blog, it breaks through some ice here in the office and we're able to move forward more productively. So I actually am going to um, push back uh, to you guys a little bit because I remember years ago, a uh, conversation being uh, held around talking about innovation and developing a uh, more innovative uh, thought in, in the association space. And that being blogged about a lot at the time and there actually being action happening as a result of this. So that's, that's where that, um, that's what prompted that question because I just, I know, I know that I've seen results of what both of you have, have blogged about in the past. Um, as far as inspiration for your writing, as you run across things, Eric, you you do you you create haiku, and you um, you share you share a lot on your blog. Have you ever considered Have you ever considered a different format, or have you ever considered uh, going a different direction? And and uh, and then Jamie, uh, I'll ask you the same thing, and and offer you the chance to talk about culture chat a little bit with that. So Eric. Well, I'm not sure what you mean by a different direction, Kiki. I mean, um, there's a wide variety of things that uh, are discussed uh, on the different blogs that I, I do. Uh, the Eric Lanky blog is really the only, the only one that I'm focusing on uh, probably for the last year or so. And I've figured out a way, at least in my own head to kind of merge some of my, uh, outside the office interests uh, into that stream. Uh, I'm beginning to see some of those non-traditional association posts gather more interest and more steam uh, in the community than some of the more association specific things. So I'm intrigued by that. I, I forget the, uh, the guest who talked earlier about the importance of reading if you wanna write. And 
that's a big part of my life as well. And it just seemed like I was missing something from my thought process by not including my experiences uh, with the different books that I'm reading. So mm -hmm. um, that's probably a new, uh, recently, that's a very new direction for, for me to, to be open and honest about. Yeah. No, I think that uh, about different direction, I was, I was really thinking about different formats as mm -hmm. so many people start looking at um, doing things like podcasts or vlogging or that kind of thing. Um, have you ever considered going in that direction? Well, I'm just shocked my microphone is working here. So uh, yeah. <laughs> the technical challenge associated with some of those formats, uh, you know, go blog or I'm still on the oldest platform there is. Uh, I'm <laughs> it works. I'm looking to find a new DOS uh, platform for you. <laughs> There's no images, just a C prompt, and then you do your blog post. And that's that it. would make a lot of sense for me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about you, Jamie? Um, I know that you have... I, I, you know, we always talk about the first way that we actually met and had our first discussion was I was working for an association and wanted to interview you for a podcast that we were creating there. Um, it was, and it was the best podcast recorded in the, the history best. of humankind and it, and it, it disappeared, <laughs> it never got published. It was just lost. They lost the file. So oh, we'll God. never know how great that was, but yeah. No, we've, we've, I've started doing podcasting now. Um, we, we, we added sort of a culture chat, um, podcast to what we post on the blog at work XO and we called the blog culture chat. Um, and I actually, I was like, I don't know. Well, I was the same way about blogging, right? You know, 10, 15 years, whatever, how many years ago I was like, oh, blogging, who'd want to read my stuff? Why would I do this? Well, this is stupid. And then of course now I fell in love with it. But, um, the uh, I was the same way about podcasting. Like, really, just what am I going to do? But now that I have a, a new business partner, Charlie Judy, uh, in Chicago, um, who who is is also kind of occasionally ranty like I am. Like, we we make for I think we got a good shtick going on. And so, I having someone to talk to in a podcast has been real important to me. I don't I don't want to just sort of get up there and blab myself. But when we can go back and forth, and most of ours now we're gonna just Charlie and I, Charlie and I are gonna start doing some together. But most of them we invite a guest in and sort of have a conversation about someone who's really doing interesting things around culture. And like I I have to keep my clock like next to the computer to make sure we don't just blab on for an hour yeah, um, yeah. because because we think that's too long. And But I, it's really hard. I found that 25 minutes, 30 minutes is like gone in a heartbeat. So I'm enjoying that. Um, I don't particularly see the need to do video on this, although I do like occasionally getting my fish, you know, online. But uh, <laughs> uh, that's yeah, I stick. I stick with the podcasting and the blogging and it was a big deal for me to sort of not blog on jamieotter.com anymore once we opened up the WorkXO blog. But uh, I've been so busy, I can only blog once a week max now, um, which is, is a lot less than I used to. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and producing those books, too, takes a lot of time, too. So it's a little Well, bit and you mentioned association success. I mean, I'm blogging eight times a month on association. Well, not me, but Maddie and I are blogging eight times a month on association success. And I really enjoyed that because I've been able to focus very specifically on associations in a context that is very association specific, which was always a challenge with Jamie Notter because I had clients in, in sort of both sides of the 501c3 line. Um, and so it just made it a little harder to do that occasional post that talks about member engagement and non-dues revenue and then confuse sort of the other side of my life. And so now I, I like having that, that separateness actually. Um, so that I can really dig deep into the association stuff over there. So are there, are there podcasters, bloggers, uh, vloggers that are out there that, um, you are, you particularly like that you, that are in the association space or outside of the association space? What are some of your I, Basically, I'm a huge Eric Lanky fan, obviously. Yeah. Uh, I, but I will say, I mean, I'm a fan of everyone who's been up here. I mean, like, I, I like the, you know, the association blogging community has always been really important to me. We were just reflecting the other day about the early blogger cons at the ASAE meetings when it was yeah. like eight people. <laughs> and 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 only yeah. two of them blogged and at least one of them had a lot of bourbon like it was like you know it was the <laughs> early days you know um and now there's a lot i like that but i will say i want to give i do want to give eric some credit as a ceo blogger i do not know why we don't have more 
mm-hmm. in the association community who would do that. I mean, I, it is such an opportunity. And Eric sort of made it clear the stuff, applying his own stuff to his own organization and blogging about it and getting better results because of it. Like, that's been really cool. Like, why? I mean, there are smart CEOs in right. the association world who get technology. This is not even like a generational thing. It's, I mean, like, there's plenty out there, but I don't see them even thinking about blogging and that that kind of kind of shocks me right me too what do you think eric what are do you have any favorites that are out there that that you go to for inspiration yeah i'm baffled by the same thing that that jamie is i i i don't know of any other working execs that blog regularly so if someone does know of such individuals please send them my way i would love to follow their stuff um, and uh, almost everyone that has been on the chat so far are people that I follow regularly and, and really enjoy uh, the insights and the and the uh, the information that I get from from their content. So uh, we've got to keep talking about these things. If you know, uh, I, I try to focus as much as I can on uh, applying theory to practice. You know, and really trying to make things work inside of a working organization. Uh, everyone has challenges. That's my specific challenge. And uh, uh, it's been very uh, beneficial to share those experiences and to get feedback on them uh, in this community. All right. Well, thank you both. Um, Sorry, everyone, that we went over a little bit. Um, It was just really hard to get get everyone started and brought on and shuffled around. But I have to say that this has been absolutely fantastic. And for those of you who are going to ASAE Annual in Salt Lake City, it is a goal of mine um, to try to pull everyone together for some kind of, you know, throwback association blogger con for, for old time's sake. But I think also for new time's sake, because there's a lot of new there are a lot of of new voices and there are a lot of things that we should be talking about out there. So watch for that. I'll be, I'll definitely be tweeting out information about where we might be able to, to join up um, in Salt Lake city. And I'm going to kick you guys off as I wrap this up. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Eric. Um, And thank you everyone. Thanks for all of our special guests that we had this week. Um, It's been a phenomenal association chat. Agreed? I want to thank all of our guest bloggers and podcasters and participants in the chat. Um, All of your comments and your thoughts that you shared, absolutely phenomenal. Um, I do want to note before I let everyone go that there uh, is the Trends 2016 Young and Aspiring Association Professional um, Award nomination that's out there. And so if you know a young executive, that association executive that's worthy of being named a Trends 2016 Young and Aspiring Association Professional, then please do nominate him or her. And I am going to post the link over here on the side. All right. And um, in addition to that, uh, tonight, if you're in the D.C. area, there is a happy hour for association professionals and industry folks who love them on uh, at 530 at Blackfin, D.C. That's uh, located across from ASA, just down the street a little bit from ASA headquarters. Uh, In addition, if you had a good time with this chat and you learned something that will help you now or in the future, please do share, share with your friends, share with your colleagues and come back in the future for some more association chats. We would love to have you. I do want to promote the next chat coming up next week is going to be from panicked to productive, how to get your arm on. And then the week after that, we're going to have how to get the best ROI out of data analytics. And so that's going to be a fun one too. Uh, As always, if you want to continue the discussion, you can join association chat uh, Facebook group for regular updates on upcoming topics and special guests. And with that, my friends, I hope you have a phenomenal week over and out. I am going to stop recording and thank all of you once more for this fabulous association chat.